All right, so let's start. So uh, let me just uh, get started with giving your background about the course and what is it that um, I plan to achieve by delivering the course and what is it that you can and how is it that you can uh, best benefit by by working together or, or, or over this uh, on this course. The idea is the, the way I have structured this course is based upon the uh, the layout of a systematic literature review paper. So we will handle each and every part of the paper, section of the paper and even subsections of the paper to help you to write what is required in a systematic review article. Okay. So that is how uh, this course is designed. This is very different from other courses that are out there because the focus there is not on in, like, intensively uh, and thoroughly covering the um, actual writing of it. You may attend or you may have seen many other courses that teach you how to do it, how to do a systematic review, but not actually work with you and do it. Yeah. And I would want you to uh, take the inputs from this session and use it while you are writing your research paper while you're writing your SLR. Okay, so it may be some something it might it may be uh, very basic for some of you, uh, but it may be uh, or, or maybe not. So let's start with that uh, today. So that is the uh, aim for today's session, covering the writing and academic writing bit, some tips and tricks, some suggestions. Uh, and once you know that, uh, and when we start writing uh, the paper, your SLR paper, you can start incorporating these ideas. Uh, these uh, English writing or academic writing uh, things. So let's start with parts of speech. So when we talk about writing or when we talk about English for that matter, there are a few things that help that formulate a sentence. So there are verbs, adverbs, noun, pronoun, adjectives and prepositions. Okay. So the proper use of these different parts of speech will help you to improve your writing. Yeah. And one of the things that is very important things is when you're writing uh, your paper, you have to be, you have to ensure that it is grammatically correct. And it is a skill that you will build up if English is not your first language. And it is a skill that I'm still developing myself. So I also don't say that I, I, I have the best of the English that, that is out there. Even I still get my papers uh, proofread by a professional proofreader. Uh, to ensure that there are no grammatical errors when we when I submit my paper for review. Okay, but if we can work to improve uh, our writing from where we are to one step further and gradually we will see that this is what will help uh, you in a long run. So let's see some examples. So a verb like you probably know is describes an action. So like studying, eating, jogging, adverb are words that we use that go along with a word yeah for example quickly eating or diligently studying so when you're using these terms uh, keep in mind what is a word that you're using in your sentence and what is the adverb that you are using in sentence a noun is um, anything anything or a, a person girl boy car house a pronoun is he she him her Adjective is something that describes the noun, like a beautiful, smart, intelligent, and so on. And prepositions are to, from, into, out, and so on. So this is some uh, starting parts of speech to uh, begin with. The next I want to talk about is the tense. And this comes up quite often when you're writing your uh, systematic literature review or just literature review for that matter, is how should you uh, write the authors or how should you refer them? For example, when you're writing the introduction and discussion and discussing other people's work, you try to use present tense. For example, say uh, Vidi believes or Vidi claims uh, versus Vidi believed or somebody Mills claimed or something like that. You know, so keep it in present tense. Uh, the reason why uh, many, many uh, academics, oh, sorry, many uh, English experts suggest this way is because if it is in past tense, it may give an impression that their studies are way too old or they may or these or, or the people, uh, these people may not even, uh, they may be from a different era. You know, it may be like 100 years ago, 200 years ago, somebody said that. So in that case, you can use the past tense. But if it is a research that is recent and uh, it is preferable that you use the present tense. But there may be exceptions to these rules, like I said, uh, and you can always uh, if, if, that, if it falls within that exception, you can always uh, change it. So 
another thing is in the introduction section avoid the use of future tense for example in this paper we will instead of saying that it is always be it's a good idea to say it this way uh, the purpose of this paper is to you know so keep it uh, in the current in the uh, present tense not in the future tense and also try to be assertive and confident uh, in in your writing and avoid the use of words such as may uh, because it, that kind of reduces your it, it shows the level of confidence if you are confident about something say it confidently and do not use any words that kind of weaken or soften the argument that you are trying to make yeah i'll go a little bit more into prepositions because this is what um, we will be using when uh, in writing i mean you you don't realize it but uh, there is a, there is a document that i will that i have shared on the uh, on the on our private group and you can see the different types or commonly used uh, uh, prepositions in the uh, in academic writing yeah so a preposition is typically followed by a noun or a pronoun and together they form a prepositional phrase yeah so for example beside vidhi or into the shop or with you these are some common uh, typical examples from non academic uh, area let's look at some examples from the uh, academic space so some more examples of uh, similar words so about across against these are all prepositions all right so this uh, document is from flinders university i found it very interesting because it kind of categorizes different types of phrases of uh, prepositional phrase, phrases uh, that you would probably use when you are writing in when you are writing your uh, slr so if you just if you realize just now i used a word probably yeah so probably it's something uh, a word that is weakening my my own sentence so i should not use probably because i would say you should use these phrases not probably so words like probably may this kind of uh, uh, soften your arguments uh, and this is something very uh, uh, you do it uh, un unknowingly subconsciously uh, but when you're conscious about it uh, you will realize that okay i should uh, i should remove this from my writing okay so some examples are here um, if you're talking about um, uh, sorry when you're writing uh, your research paper these are some of the phrases prepositional phrases that you can use and this is a big list uh, you can uh, download it later on um, and when you're writing i think you can start looking at these things and incorporating these in your writing it will give you uh, new ways to write or probably increase your um, vocabulary or increase your uh, writing capacity um and uh, you will have a good paper 